Hello and welcome everyone. I'm going to show you how the random number generator is created from scratch. Now, the random number generator produces a set of random numbers based on what you write here in A10 to what you put here in B10. So if you were to say 1 to 10, it will produce a list from 1 to 10 and it will be a unique list. So you can change your numbers to 1 to 100 and it will only produce the numbers in a long list in a unique fashion. So how would you go about doing that? Well, it's created in VBA and we're going to use something called a system collection sorted list and a get by index to pluck the data out with an array and we'll declare all our variables and it should work quite nicely at the end. All right, let's get right into it. So we'll press Alt F11. All right, so we want to double click on this module that I've created for us, just a blank module, and we'll sub and we'll create our procedure. So we'll call it rand number um, unique yeah cool all right so now we'll declare our variables so we're going to we want a starting point so we'll dim my start as a long integer we'll dim my end as a long integer we'll dim our last row as a long integer and we'll dim i as a long integer all right good stuff so they're all my integers and then I'm going to dim the sheet as a worksheet. And then I'm going to dim A as a one dimensional array. Okay, so they're all my variables. They're all done. So we've set it up at the top. Now we'll just sort of, uh, we'll describe some of these variables. What are they actually equal to? So our sheet, we're going to set our sheet is going to be equal to sheet one and that is our random sheet so that's our first variable and then we're going to do our start now end so my start is going to be equal to uh have i made a mistake there so my start is equal to no probably not uh so sheet dot square bracket a10 and then let's copy that and then paste it there. And then we'll say my end, whee, my end is equal to B10. Okay, so we've effectively got A10 and B10 trapped as our start and our end range. Perfect. All right, good stuff. Now we'll trap our last row. So we'll say our last row is equal to uh, our sheet and then oh, dot, and then I'll say square bracket uh, a one o eight five seven six. That's the magic number at the bottom of Excel. Dot end, and then we'll go Excel up. Dot row. All right, good stuff. So that should trap our last row. Let's let's we can test that. So we'll go view. We'll view our locals window, and then I'll just run the code down to here by pressing F five. Oh, I made a typo just there. That's the beauty of having option explicit. It would have ran perfectly. So random, so my end. So my start, my end, F5. Now we're up to here. Our last row is going to equal F8, 12. Perfect. All right, so that effectively, that says that our last row is just there. Yeah, so it says 12. All right, so what I want to do is I want to trap a possible error in the code. So if, for example, somebody deletes that or if the heading gets somehow changed or manipulated, if it's not there, I don't want to delete these, yeah? So I want to delete the entire list, whether it's 10 items or 10,000 items at the very start. So we get a clean list over and over and over again, okay? So we'll delete everything if it's uh, lower than uh, row 12. So we'll just say if our last row is greater than 12, then what we want to do is we want to delete everything from 13 onwards. So we'll say sheet dot range. We range open bracket and we'll say A13. Whoop. A 13 
uh, and then we'll go to the bottom of that range. So we'll say sheet dot range, and then we'll go all the way to the bottom of column A, and we'll go and rows dot count dot end, and then we'll go Excel up, and then we'll double bracket, and we'll just say to clear the range, yeah? And we can test that Let's just go back into Excel. So I'll put some random data there. Do, 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 do. Okay, Alt F11. Now we know everything works to this point, so we press F5. And then what we'll do is I'll just minimize this so we can see that. Very good. So it should go on. I'll take the breakpoint out. It should go on to this part of the equation. So we should go F8, yep, nice. And it should remove everything from row 13 to that range being shown over there. Here we go, enter, boom, done. All right, good stuff. So you'll notice what I'm doing. I'm actually writing and then testing. Write, then test, write, then test. Saves us getting to the bottom and going, oh, hang on, we've got three issues with our code. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, read in our, uh, array variable just here, so just here. So we're gonna read in A, and this is gonna go from zero to my end less my start, yeah? All right, so intuitively that is from zero to 10, let me just move this across, 10 minus, minus our start, which is one. So that would be nine, but zero to nine is actually 10 items. So it gives us the right number, yeah? All right, good stuff. So now we move into our collection. So we'll say, with, uh, we wanna create an object, and then we open a bracket, and then we'll say, we want our, bracket, our item to be a system, dot and it's collections dot and then it's sorted list all right good stuff and then we'll close our bracket all right so now it's capitalized this guy so it's it's a fair fair bet that we've got that all correct okay so this is going to create a sorted list within our range and then we're going to pluck that out uh, by drawing on the uniqueness of our collection. So we're gonna firstly randomize, and then we're gonna create a looping construct. And our loop is gonna go from our start to end. So we'll say for i equals my start to my end. All right, good stuff. Now we're gonna use the power of the collection. So we'll say dot item, yeah? And if you'll remember from our scripting dictionary lessons, our, our, script, our dictionaries have items and keys, yeah? So our item we're gonna randomize. So RND, randomize, and then that is gonna be equal to I, yeah? We'll just say next I. And that's the end of that looping construct, yeah? So we're gonna push the, these items, we're gonna push the start and the end sort of random number into the item of the collection, yeah? And now we're gonna pull that data out and pull it and push it into our one dimensional array. So we'll use and abuse this I again, because it's been done here. So we'll say for I, is equal to, and our array goes from zero to dot count of the items in our, in our uh, collection, and then we'll just take off one, yeah? Minus one, all right? And then we'll just go next, I, good stuff. All right, so this is where the fun starts. So we'll say A, I, remember it's a one dimensional array, and then that is going to be equal to, now we'll use our get by index, which allows us to draw on a sorted index of a collection. So 
it's dot get by index and then we have to say which one all right good stuff all right so that basically puts all of the information that we need um, into our array so we just close out our system collection sorted list so we end the width and now all we have to do is to I'll just move this up a little bit we need to move we need to pull what's been stored in this one dimensional array into a range so we've got to resize the range so it's as long as the array yeah so what we do is we'll say sheet dot range and then we'll start at a13 and then we'll resize that range and then we can use the bounds of this variable so the bounds of our array a so the upper bounds so we use the upper bounds u bound and then a okay so that'll get it give us the top of the uh, upper bounds of a which is like say it's got 10 items it'll give us 10 yeah so we'll add one because it starts at zero and now we're talking about cells that start in a1 go all the way through to the bottom of the range it doesn't start in zero ranges so we just add one bit because this particular array starts at zero and then we'll say we'll close that bracket and we'll say that the value is equal to and then we've got to transpose the array yeah so we'll go uh, application dot transpose and what are we transposing we're transposing a all right now if i click on the next line and these guys come capital yep we're good okay all right good stuff so basically if we've done this all correct there wasn't too many opportunities to test this sort of stuff through here but if we've done it all correctly we should be able to um, add this to our little button and then it should produce a number from 1 to 10 and we'll test it under a range of conditions okay so let's go back into our worksheet and work it out okay so we want to right click this list and we want to assign a macro the random number unique click ok all right good stuff so basically this is where the rubber hits the road we can put any number we want in here so we'll say 1 to 10 nice we can run it several times and we can count that list so let's count ifs open a bracket click in there and then let's hard code the starting point f4 where that's equal to our criteria can be our criteria is going to be that cell so it's a13 good stuff so we should get a growing range and we should only get ones so that means that the items in here are unique one hasn't appeared another time two hasn't appeared another time etc etc because if you look at the range for four it goes all the way to the top and we can change this to say 20 run our unique list just test it the, the, the items only appear once you could say a uh, thousand and then create your list and then run that down to the bottom control shift L and then see how many times that appears only once in the whole list and does it go all the way to the bottom yes it does yeah all right good stuff that is how you create a unique random number generator from scratch you've got it on video so you can play it at your own speed but there you go peeps have fun with it and have a wonderful day.